In this video, I'm going to show you how to work with radicals. I'm going to show you how to convert mixed radicals to entire radicals and vice versa, and then also how to add and subtract radicals. Now to begin, let's take a look at the parts of a radical and then some definitions. Now this is a radical symbol written right here. The stuff or the part inside underneath the radical symbol is called the radicin. Now to the left of the radical, written up here in a small number, is called the index. Now usually there is no number because we usually square root, which means that the number would be 2. So if the number is 2, we don't tend to write the number 2. Now taking a look at some definitions, the first one here is like radicals. Now like radicals are radicals that have the same radicand. and index. An entire radical is a radical with no coefficient that is multiplied to the radical. So an example of an entire radical would be the square root of 18. So there's no number multiplied in the front or in the back. A mixed radical is where there is a coefficient multiplied to the radical. So an example would be 3 times the square root of 2. Now when it is 3 times root 2, we don't tend to put a time symbol, we just put 3 and then root 2. Now we need to look at restrictions on the variables because when we square root or fourth root, there are some restrictions. So these are this happens when a radical Sorry, if a radical represents a real number and has an even index, then the radicand must be positive. So that is the restriction. So when we square root or fourth root, there's going to be a restriction on the variable. So let's take a look at a couple of examples. So here we have the square root of 5 minus x. So that means that a radicand, so inside here, that has to be greater or equal to zero. So it has to be positive because we can only square root a positive number. So to find out what x is, we're going to move the five to the right side. So we're going to subtract five. So we get negative x is greater or equal to negative five. And then we're going to divide or multiply both sides by negative one. And so we get x is less than or equal to positive 5. Now don't forget to switch the inequality symbol because we have multiplied by a negative number. So the restriction on this question is that x has to be less than or equal to 5 because it's an even index. And if you plug in some numbers such as 4 or 3, this means that we'll have 5 minus 4. We have the square root of 1, and we can do that. But if x is bigger than 5, such as 6, if we have 5 minus 6, that won't work because we'll have the square root of negative 1. So this needs to be applied because the index is 2, which is an even number. Now the second one here, I have the cube root of 5 minus x. So in this case, there is no restriction. So we could say that x is all real numbers, and I'll put a reason down, and it's because the index is odd. And you are allowed to Q root a negative number, okay? So let's do a little example here. So you can Q root a negative number. So for example, we can cube root negative eight because we know that negative two times negative two times negative two is negative eight. So that means that the cube root of negative eight is negative two. Note that in the second example, I said cube root because the index was three. We don't say cube index 
just because it sounds weird. So we'll say Q root and root can be interchanged with the word index. So now let's take a look at how to convert mixed radicals to entire radicals. What we're going to do is write the coefficient in the mixed radical with a root or an index that matches the radical and the radicand that's already existing. So for in this example here, we have three times root seven. So notice the root seven, the index here would be a two. So what we wanna do is to write three also with a root of two. So that means that this would be the same as three times three, and this would be the square root because the other one is also squared. And then we want, we write this as root seven. So three times three is nine. And then we still have the root seven. And now we're gonna multiply these two radicands together and we get root 63. So the reason that we wrote three times three is because the index is two, which means that we need two threes. If I square root nine, this part right here, as a check, I would actually get back what I started with, which is three. So let's try this with a variable. So we have m to the five, and then the square root of m. So because the index here is two, we're gonna rewrite m to the five as m to the five times n to the five underneath a square root, okay? And then this is multiplied by the square root of m. So in this first radical, I have the square root of m to the 10 times the square root of m. So then we multiply the radicands together. And remember that when we multiply variables, what we do with the exponent is that we add them. So there's an exponent of 10 in the first radicand, and the second one has a, an exponent of one, which I'll write. You don't need to write it, but I'll write it down to show you. So then 10 plus one is then 11. So the entire radical would then be the square root of m to the 11. Now I just wanna write a little note here. So for both of these, it is a square root. So we multiply the coefficient by itself two times. So let's take a look at the next one. The next one, notice that the index here is four. So because it's four, we're gonna write also a fourth root. And we're gonna take the two x, which is our coefficient, and we're gonna write that out four times. So two x times two x times two x times two x, because we want it to fourth root. So when I fourth root this, two x, two x, two x, two x, I actually get just two x. The other radical will have the fourth root of five x cubed. We're gonna join our four two x's together. So we have two times two times two times two, which is 16. And then x times x times x. Remember, we're gonna add all of these exponents of one. So now we have x to the power of four, and then times the other fourth root of five x cubed. So then we're gonna multiply our radicands together. So 16 times five is 80, and we have the fourth root of 80, and then we're gonna add the exponents because we're multiplying x to the four times x cubed. So this will give me x to the seven. Now, I'm gonna identify a restriction for these two here because they both have a variable. So here we have to say that m is greater or equal to zero because it's an even root. And in the second one, it's also an even root. So we also have to say that x is also greater or equal to zero. Now, just to write a similar note for this one, this one is a fourth root. So we need to multiply 
the coefficient by itself four times. Next, I'm going to show you how to convert entire radicals to mixed radicals. Now, there are two methods to do this. Uh, the first method is to use the greatest perfect root as a factor, or we can use prime factorization. So I'm going to show you both in this first example. So we have the square root of 45. So we want to find the greatest perfect square that can go into 45. Okay, and that number is 9. So we're going to write root 45 as the square root of 9. And we know that 9 times 5 is 45, so we're going to rewrite this as square root of 9 times the square root of 5. And then we just have to square root 9, which is 3. So then we can write this as 3 square root of 5. Now method 2 is to take the number 45, and we're going to express it as a product of its prime factors. Now this one's a small one that we don't probably need to do this, but when the numbers get big, it is really difficult. So let me show you with a smaller number first. So we have 45, and we know that 3 times 15 gives me 45, and then 15 is 3 times 5. So then what I'm going to do is rewrite the number 45 as its prime factors. So it's 3 times 3 times 5. And then we're going to combine the factors depending on the index. Now, because the index here is 2, you're going to combine pairs of factors. If the index is 3, then you would combine 3. So what I mean is that here I have 3 times 3, and then we have 5. Now you actually don't really need to write this middle step here, but it's just to show you that when I square root 3 times 3, when I square root, I am going to just pull out 1, 3. So this would then be 3 times the square root of 5. Let me show you two more examples with variables. So here we have the cube root of x to the 14 and y to the 6. Now what we want to do is, again, I'm going to actually use method 1. I want to create two radicals where in the first radical they are perfect cubes. So a perfect cube would mean that the exponent would have to be divisible by 3. So in this case, that would be x to the power of 12. Now the reason that is, is because I know that x to the 4 times x to the 4, if I have 3 x to the 4s, I get x to the 12. So that means the cube root of x to the 12 is actually x to the 4. I'm kind of jumping ahead here. All right, now y to the 6, that's divisible by 3 already. So I can put y to the 6 here. And the cube root of y to the 6, same thing, I can take 6 divided by 3, and I have y squared. Now what I have left over is that I have x to the 12, but I have x to the 14 to begin with. So that means I have two more x's left over. So that has to go in my second radical. So this is going to be x squared in my second radical. And I have to bring that down, so that will be the cube root of x sorry, cube root of x squared. Now you can check this by putting and multiplying by three of each of these x4s and y squares to see if you get back to what you got originally. Now in the second example, there's a number and a variable. Now the number is pretty big, so let's do a prime factorization here. So we have 108, so I know that's nine times 12, and then nine is three times three, 12 is three times four, and then four is two times two. All right, I'm going to actually use method 2 this time, just to be a little bit different. So this is a square root, so that means I want 2 of everything. So I can go 3 times 3, and I still have an extra 3, so I'll put that in the other radical. And then I have a 2 times 2, and I have m to the 7. Now because I want square root, I can only square root even numbers. So this has to be m to the 6, which means that I'm going to put my extra m in my second radical. So notice it's m to the 6 times m to the 1, which would give me m to the 7. So square rooting this, I get 3 times 2 times m cubed times the square root of 3m. Combining this together, I get 6m cubed times the square root of 3m.